Mike, uh, back-to-back clean sheets, back-to-back wins. What are your thoughts on the match tonight? My thoughts on the match are it's um, exactly what you just said are the other positives. Uh, six points in two games, four days apart. Um, two shutouts, six points. Uh, but like I said in the post game with Dunny and, and, and Dunny, um, is a compliment to my team. Uh, I expect, I know they could play a hell of a lot better. So great three points, great shutout, great grittiness to, to, to keep the shutout and get the result. But when we're at our best, it's, it's far from what we were tonight. And again, that's a, that's a compliment to my players, not an insult. Mike, um, the sentiment of, n of, not, of not having played as well as you want to, but still winning, that's, you guys kind of said that the last game as well. Are you guys, do you think that maybe right now you're kind of still, they are maybe f as a team finding a way to win those games, even though you're not performing as well as you'd like? That's, that's one of the most important things, you know? I mean, perhaps my first year that I was here, parts of last year, a year or two before I was here, this team would have uh, would not have gotten the result. So that's a positive, you know, the, the mentality, the, the, the grittiness, determination. Um, again, that, that's very important when you're building a team and when you have a, a team that you want to accomplish things with. It's not always the tactics. It's not always the, the beautiful play. It, it, it's getting a result. And, and I think tonight we certainly did that. And parts of Saturday we did that. Especially in the midst of a very congested week, three games in eight days. How how positive is it for you to have guys like Aaron who can slide to the left or the right? Marcelo can come in, not miss a beat. Brooks as well. Just the the depth that you have, and guys know their roles at this point in the season. It's very important, you know. I mean, if you look at us on roster right now, healthy, we have two outside backs. That's it, you know. Brooks, I would consider an outside back hybrid slash uh, winger. Um, so that was a that was a necessary change tonight, and I thought Brooks stepped up. You know, I, I, I couldn't play. It's got to be a rotation with those with just three outside backs, and I thought Brooks stepped up. And Aaron um, has the familiar familiar hour. How do you say that word? Familiarity. Familiarity, yeah. Um, I'm playing on the left, even though it's not his natural. Uh, he played there last year, so I thought they did well. I thought they held it down, along with Natum and, and Justin defensively, again, and Nikki, of course, uh, to get this second shutout. And it's comforting to know that we could put someone like Brooks in, because he's familiar there, and uh, he could get the job done. Mike, the other change to the lineup was Corey Baird. How did you see Corey play, despite not having many minutes under his belt lately on the right-hand side? I thought, again, um, I think highly of Corey, um, as I do all my players. But I think it goes into what we said earlier. I, I just don't think we had a rhythm. I'm, now I'm not speaking about Corey here. I'm thinking about the team. So when you ask about Corey, I thought Corey had some very good moments. I thought just like everybody else. And I thought Corey had some uh, not so great moments in the ball just like everybody else on the field. I thought our passing tonight was very out of rhythm, um, not very clean. Uh, but we all go back to what we said earlier is three points in the second shutout is important, so they found a way. Mike, do you think that Sam could have been a track runner in another career? <laughs> um, maybe he was. Maybe he was a track runner early in his life, but uh, he's deceptively fast. You know, when you, when you look at him open up, it does, he doesn't, his gait, he doesn't have uh, quick steps. It's very long strides, and he just glides. So it was pretty cool to see that from the sideline, the long ball and him run past the two guys and great finish. On that goal, um, Ramondo said that a uh, bit of a lucky bounce. Is that something you guys have practiced at all, like playing that far out of the back, or is that just well, I mean, good Paul, clearance and Sam runs into we've it? We've never practiced that play. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that, uh, but I have to be honest. You know, part of our DNA and part of um, my philosophy is we want to find the highest option under control. Now, you could argue maybe that wasn't so under control, the clearance, but the first look should always be the highest and then you build back from there. If it's not on highest, when's the next progression to play? Um, so perhaps that's part of our, that they, they, they followed the philosophy and, and maybe that's what they did purposely, but because it was a long, great clearance and Sam timed it perfectly and got in front um, and put it away, it's a great finish. Not an easy finish. Michael, in, the, in maybe the first 30 minutes, did Columbus do 
anything particular that was making it difficult for you guys to kind of play out, or was it simply a matter of your just lack of sharpness on the passing, and then were adjustments made because you seemed to be better after about the 30 minutes? Well, I mean, it's a twofold. I think part of it has to do on us um, not being sharp, like you said, but also, I mean, Caleb's a good coach, you know? And I said it all week. Everybody kept talking about they, their results lately. You know, he's a very good coach, and he knows the game, and he had them set up in a way to disrupt us building out, you know? And, and he didn't sit back as much as I thought he would because a lot of teams coming in here with the altitude and especially three game weeks, that's a difficult part is breaking down a deep block, which they did get to. But I thought that their pressure, stepping out, breaking lines, um, dictating at times where we were going to play through their pressure, uh, was very good. Um, but then after it opened up a little bit, I think we were a bit sharper, especially in the second half. Um, but I also think it got a little bit too, <clears throat> got a little bit too um, back and forth. I mean, there were, there were moments in this game that there was three or four transitions from box to box, you know, and it just became a really wide open game. Um, but we, we got a bit sharper in the second half. Uh, I think we could have possessed it a bit more the last 15 minutes in the attacking half to kind of kill the game off. But three, three points, one nothing. With a tight uh, table, just like always, when would you like to find the form you're looking for in your team? Is it, you know, tomorrow? I, or, found, yeah. I found, you know, we, we found the form that I'm looking for this year uh, many times, over the last three years, many, many times. But when we don't have that form, it gets ugly sometimes, you know? But again, we, we found a way tonight. We found a way to do it, and we found a way last game. I think we played better last game, but we found a way last game. So I, I don't want to be mistaken here, and, and please, you guys disagree with me. Let's make this an open conversation. Disagree with me if you don't agree with me. We have played some fantastic soccer at times over the last three years. Uh, so this is not something that I'm looking for the first time we're doing something. What I'm looking for is, is more consistency. You know, and that, again, that starts with the coaches. We, right, the first thing I went back after this game, I said, what are we not doing, you know, to get ready to, for our off-ball move, for a sharp passing? What are we not doing? That's where it starts, you know? So I, it's not we're searching for it. These guys are capable, and that's why I said it's a compliment that I'm saying this, because they're, they're capable of so much more. But, and result, we got three points, and we got a shutout. So I probably shouldn't be this, this down. Does anybody disagree with me that, that we haven't played some beautiful soccer over the last three years at, at some points? Please, speak now. Let's have a debate. <laughs> okay. Huh? We'd lose any no, you wouldn't. Soccer, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> huh? Uh, do you have any un update on injuries to uh, Sam and uh, Ned? No, I, I don't. Um, Sam was very, happened very quickly at halftime. Training staff came and said he has to come off. Um, something perhaps with his quad, but I haven't got a final answer. And uh, Nadam, I haven't got the final answer, but Nadam's not somebody that goes down unless he's, you know, something happened. Uh, so I'll, I'm sure we'll have that update tomorrow at the earliest, Friday the latest. Mike, how important is uh, Everton Louise setting the tone in the midfield? He seems to be flying around the ball night in and night out. Yeah, Everton, we bought him in for a reason, and, and we really researched him and, and identified he's a, he's a true number six, you know? He's not a guy, he's not a playmaker, you know? He, he's, I almost look at him as how I was as a center back, is that my job was to win the ball and get it to somebody who could make something happen, you know? And Everton does that. Uh, so he was big tonight. Uh, I thought that the reason why when we brought Sam out that we didn't just, just didn't do a swap perhaps for a Tate or push Corey up and bring Plata or Tate out wide uh, was because they started having a bit success centrally because he was sitting alone sometimes and really working. Uh, so we decided to bring Nick in to help him out. Um, but he was, he was big tonight, um, Everton. Mike, I think last week it might have been you touched on the players needing to have the confidence to play balls and play forward. I know that several times during the game we'll see a negative ball back, and your body language is, kind of tells the story of what you think. But I'm curious, do you, are, is that balance there? Are they playing back too much? Do you, I mean, how do you get them to play more how, so your body language doesn't do that? Uh, 
I got to work on my body language because I, you know, I agree with you. You know, I, I, I show it a little too much. Um, yeah, I was not happy tonight with the amount of times we played back, but I think we've played back um, a lot throughout this year. And initially, it's always on the guy with the ball, but when you look higher ahead, the things that we're identifying is who's moving into space, you know? And, and when they move into that space, if the ball doesn't come, how quickly are they moving out and somebody else then transitioning into that space? And so a lot of it, it's not just about the guy in the ball. Perhaps you could say most of it's not the guy in the ball. Um, it's the off-ball movement. But, you know, it's easy for me from the sideline to, to see it, and it's even 10 times more easy when I go home and I could pause it, rewind, pause, and see the gaps that they could play into. I was a player. I, I, I know that when I go home and when I went home and looked at the videotape and said, damn, you know, I, I, I should have played that ball, it, it's a lot different in the moment when there's pressure coming from all over. So... My point is, is I don't think we played through the lines enough tonight. I think we played back too much. And um, it's something that, yes, we have been pushing. And it's something that the reason why you probably saw my body language on the side of the field. Um, so we're going to continue to push that, that. We're going to continue to work on that uh, because I feel we do have players that are capable of playing through those lines. And we have players ahead of them that are capable of recognizing where the space is.